Welcome back, fuckers. All right, today we're going to start breaking down the Case 1 recovery in F-18 Hornet and landing on an aircraft carrier. One of the hardest things you're going to do in DCS. All right, so we've got the uh, Super Carrier Operations Guide uh, manual up, and we're going to quickly just go through kind of the outline. We're going to do a series of videos on how to land on the carrier and break them down into the individual pieces so here we go this is the case one recovery so case one recovery begins when you contact the carrier marshal with an inbound radio command after receiving direction from marshal you will set up to enter the holding pattern over the carrier at 10 nautical miles you should have the carrier in sight and report see you at 10 over the radio marshal controller will hand you off to the tower and you'll enter the holding stack the tower will clear you to leave the holding pattern and commence your landing approach known as breaking the deck you will descend from holding and fly by the carrier just out forward of the starboard side at 800 feet, you will give a kiss off command to your flight and execute an overhead break to the left and enter the landing pattern. At three quarter nautical mile behind the ship, you will enter the groove and report in with the LSO with a ball call. You will fly the rest of the approach and landing based on visual indications on the IFLAS, ball and verbal instructions given by the LSO. All right, so that is a case one recovery. So got a nice little picture here. So we're gonna break this up into chunks so it's not one big gigantic massive video and uh yeah make it hopefully a little bit more easy to understand because by god it was super hard for me to learn how to do this stuff because there's not much stuff out there to uh, break it up so here we go we've got our aircraft carrier and we've got a 10 nautical mile bubble so we want to be for this video we're about to do we're going to have everything set up ready to go and the video will end when we hit the 10 nautical mile bubble okay so you can enter the uh from the carrier any direction you want okay but you've got to come in and be ready to go at 10 nautical miles ready to enter the next sequence so sequencing of the landing you come in at 10 nautical mile you'll enter the holding pattern you'll fly around there till you're cleared by the uh by tower to land you'll then break the deck come down descend down to the pattern altitude 800 feet you'll fly alongside the ship as soon as you go there, you enter the left-hand brake turn, come down, and then land on the jet on the deck and catch yourself a nice, sweet three-wire. That's what we're after. So that is what we're going to be doing today. All right, we're going to go through setting ourselves up, getting an aircraft configured, and all the radio commands, tack hands, and all the rest, setting yourself up to land on the carrier. So let's do it. All right, so we're going to unpause now. And we are in the jet. Come on. Load up. There we go. Now we're in the jet. Your desktop capture. Uh, so we're in the jet. And we are going to bring up our mission briefing page by pressing left alt B. So we've got, if your mission maker has done their job properly, they should have the information for the aircraft carrier. So that you contact it on radio, you can find it with the TACAN and you can use ICLS if you want. So we've got our information there, radio frequency 127.5, TACAN 71 X-ray, ICLS is channel 11. So we're gonna go ahead and punch all that stuff in now. So we're gonna bring our HSI up on our right hand MFD. Okay, and you do that by pressing the bottom middle button on your MFD twice to go to the support page, click HSI. Now we've got TACAN, ILS, all that kind of stuff. This is the page you want to be on when we're landing. So on your UFC, you've got TACAN and ILS. They're the two buttons we're going to be using now. So we're going to press TACAN. All right, at the moment it's turned off. It doesn't say on. So you're going to come over here. You're going to press on, off, and hold it until it says on. And confirm that T slash R, transmit and receive, is got the two dots next to it. And then our mode, which is X-ray, is boxed as well. All right, got the two dots. Now we're going to punch in our code, which was 71 X-ray. We're going to press enter, and you can see we have got carrier tuck and information now. So we've got a bearing 350, 28.6 nautical miles, and the uh, tuck and call sign for the Roosevelt RSV. That timer there will actually start counting down once we go out of active pause, and that's the time it will take you at your current airspeed to hit the. Uh, either the waypoint if you've got a waypoint box or the uh, the carrot, the tack end. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna press the button, the OSB right next to it to make it tack end boxed. And now we've got some information up on our HUD, 28.8 nautical mile to the Roosevelt. And we've got a 
steering icon. Okay, that little notch there if I turn it off. See it disappears and then turn it back on, she goes on. So you're gonna put your heading carrot in line with that. Alright, so now that's our tack end set up. We're gonna do the same thing with that ILS or ICLS, same deal. Press it, hold on off till it says on, punch in the appropriate channel, press enter. And then you can box the ILS and you should get a line come up when you're behind the ship to say that it's working. We're not gonna worry about that today. Uh, Next thing we want to do is we want to configure our jet. We need to get the radio set. So COM1 is set to 127.5 already, but just say you are on a different frequency to change the radio frequency in the Hornet. Click on the UFC COM1 or UFC COM2 channel selector knob to highlight it. Punch in your code 1275000. Press enter and now our code or our radio frequency is set. Uh, to bring up your commands for the radio, you need to have these two bound, com switch dash com one, com switch dash com two. Find those ones there, because that's what you're gonna use to contact the tower and talk to them on the in-game radios. All right, so we're gonna now uh, go through and check in with the carrier. So we're gonna bring up our com one menu. You can tell it's com one it says COM1 right there. We're gonna to go to F5 for ATC and we're gonna find our, what are we? CVN 71 Theodore Roosevelt. We're gonna click on that and we're gonna say inbound. Marshall 209, marking mops 176, angels 6.5, state 11.9. And we'll pause it there. All right, so now we're gonna run through that. So we've we've said that uh, we've contacted Marshall, we called him Marshall 209, our side number, marking mums 176 for 29, so we're currently 29 nautical miles behind the ship, so the ship is there, bearing 176 from the ship is where we are in relation to them. Angel 6.5, which is our altitude in thousands of feet, so 6.5 is 6,500 feet, and our fuel state is 11.9, which we can confirm it's pretty close, 11.7. So that's done on all of that automatically. We're going to unpause now, and they're going to talk back to us. And pause again. So mother is called back, so 209, mother's weather is visibility 10 plus miles clear. So they've given us a weather update saying that it's good weather. Uh, it's given us our altimeter setting that we can set down here. So just confirm that your altimeter is the same as what they give you. Case one recovery is what we're gonna be doing and expected BRC base recovery course is 349. And we're gonna report see me at 10 when we get within 10 nautical miles of the tack end okay, for the carrier. So we're gonna go ahead and unpause. I'm gonna go and set our BRC up next on the uh, HSI. Okay, so here we go. So now we know BRC is 349. What you need to do, make sure that you've got TACAN boxed. Okay, the box is around there. You're gonna come down here onto your center DDI and you're gonna click and hold. Doesn't matter which button you press, left or right mouse. Click and hold until it says C cell. Okay, call select and we're gonna go three, or nine, which is the bearing they gave us. We're gonna press enter. And now that has punched in a line for us so we can look at the uh, the TACAN and see which way the ship is flying. The ship is steaming, sorry. We've also got on our HUD, we've got an arrow for center line. And then as we get further to the left or right, there'll be dots will be appearing. So we wanna make sure that you know that arrow is in the middle of our, our velocity vector is what we're after there. Uh, cool, so that's that set. Now we're gonna come on and down and go to our support page on our left, MFD or DDI, whatever you wanna call it. Bring up our checklist page and it's just a handy little thing to have. Gives us some information. So for landing, we wanna confirm we've got wheels down, flaps down, hook down, anti-skid off, harness is good, chaff and flares off, and our aircraft weight, which is important as well. So we don't need to worry about wheels and flaps just yet, but we can take care of hook, anti-skid, and do some other stuff in the cockpit before we actually get close enough to the carrier. So we wanna do as much stuff as we can before we get there, so we can just concentrate on flying a good pattern. So first thing first, we're gonna confirm the hook is down. So we're gonna click so that hook goes down. Next thing you want is to make sure that our hook bypass is in carrier mode. 
Okay, not in field because we're landing on a carrier and our anti-skid is off okay, to land on the boat. So that is that with the uh, hook bypass set to carrier. Why you do that is if you have got your gear and flaps down, when you do that, your AOA index will light up. So you'll have uh, arrows, a circle and an arrow. Can't remember the colors. Um, I think it's green on the bottom, a red arrow on the top and a yellow donut in the middle. That's an AOA indexer, angle of attack. Uh, if you've got your gear and flaps down, that's in carrier mode. And if this thing is flashing at you, so it's turning on and off, flashing, 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 it's flashing because your arrestor hook is still up. Okay, so if your hook's not down, that light will flash if you're in carrier. So nice little trick to know there. Um, so that's that. We've set anti skid off because we're landing on the boat. We don't need to worry about anti skid. We're being stopped by an arrestor hook. And the last thing we're going to set is our radar altimeter. We're going to set that to 370 feet. And that'll make more sense when we get into actually landing. And we've pretty much configured our jet now to uh, go ahead and land. Last thing we want to worry about is our aircraft trap weight. Okay, so 33,000 pound is roughly the max weight you want to be at, 33,000 or under. So depending if you've got stores fitted or how much fuel you've got on board, you want to make sure that 33,000 or less is the uh, the weight you want to have. Otherwise, it's not gonna the rest of hooks aren't gonna like it on the uh, aircraft carrier. So as a rule of thumb, if you set your bingo to 6,000 pounds. All right, and or sorry, if your fuel load, if you've got more fuel on board than 6,000 pounds, if you set bingo to 6,000, come down here and press dump. By the time the fuel gets down to 6,000 pounds and dumps, uh, once you reach bingo, your dump switch will turn off automatically, which is really handy. Uh, 6,000 pounds, you should be about 33,000 pounds. Okay, another cool little trick there. So I always set my bingo for 6,000, and then uh, if I need to, I can dump to get my fuel down. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and come out of active pause. And we're gonna go ahead and descend down to our holding altitude. So we're cruising down, we wanna be looking at 2,000 feet, so at 10 nautical mile, remember, we wanna be at pattern or holding altitude at 10 nautical mile, as we went through at the start of the video. Cruise on down, descending down, make sure our rad out is on as well, confirm that. Okay. altimeter is set to radar and that will give us a better accurate uh, altitude so we're cruising down now we're going to level out at 2,000 feet yeah, autopilot on that'll do close enough and we're just going to cruise on in to the ship so you notice when we've put in the uh, the course line the uh, direction marker on the compass disappears and we instead we've got now the uh the course line on the hud so we're going to line up our velocity vector with that which is going to come a little to the right and cruise on through so we want to be looking at 250 knots by 10 nautical mile okay so we're at angels 2 2000 feet we're going to be at 250 knots by the time we hit 10 nautical mile to come into the holding pattern all right so we will uh, continue to cruise on in, get a little closer. One more thing that you can do right now is you can change the scale on your HSI to 10 nautical miles, okay? And that will make more sense at a, on the later video, okay? You can use the uh, scale and your little uh, aircraft indication to gauge that you're roughly in the right rollout pattern for the other uh, downward. But we'll explain all that shit later, don't stress. Okay, yeah, just put on 10 mile before you come into within 10. So we're just gonna cruise on up now. We'll speed up time here, get in a little bit closer. We're gonna go ahead and put on our auto throttle. Okay. And auto throttle as well, guys, if you didn't know. ATC engage, disengage. Guess default T on the keyboard that will put a, uh, a throttle control, so your throttle kind of take care of themselves. So it's gonna come across now, align ourselves up so that the uh, velocity vector is right in the middle of the, or sorry, the line, the tack end line is right in the middle of our velocity vector, so three, four, nine, and we're pretty much at 
10 nautical miles. So we've done our job properly. So we're gonna go ahead and active pause right now. So that is what you wanna do before you get within 10 miles. Okay, quickly confirm it. Confirm that hook is down. Hook bypass is set to carry it. Any skid is off your uh, fuel state. Okay, you wanna be at 6,000 pounds. So we can go ahead and press dump now and you can see if we go to F2 view, you know we're in active pause. It's dumping fuel out of the uh, out of the vertical stabs there. That's where the fuel comes out. You can see our fuel is dumping. And once that fuel load gets down to 6,000 pounds, our fuel dump will turn off automatically and our aircraft weight should be below 33,000 ready to go. So just use that little uh, checklist to give you a hand and just wanna make sure you're configured. So hook down, any skid is set to off, set your uh, hook bypass the carrier, rat out set to 370 feet and confirm that your aircraft weight is underneath max trap weight. And that will do us on this one. All right, I hope that helped. If it did, make sure you hit the like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the YouTube channel. It helps out a lot. And lastly, come on over and check me out on Twitch because I uh, stream Monday to Friday at 1300 Australian Western Standard Time. If you haven't already, come in and say good day. Ask any questions you got live on stream and just watch us do our thing. All righty, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Catch you fuckers on the next one.